where in the Bible does Jesus say that he's God? Uh, why doesn't he say it? If this is something so important that humans, just salvation is so important that he just comes, why didn't Jesus just come out and say this plainly? Since the New Testament doesn't teach, there's only one person who's God. That's why we're Trinitarian, because the Bible forced us to that position. For Jesus to come up to a first century audience, Jews, and he said, I am God without qualification. That would have miscommunicated because they would have assumed that he's claiming to be the father in heaven, but he's not the father in heaven. So what is the best way for Jesus to communicate to his audience that he, they'll get the point, I'm not the father, but I'm God in the flesh. To say I am God without qualification, that would miscommunicate. It's just like today when Muslims tell me, well, if he is God, was he praying to himself? See, that means they don't get how I'm using the term God. The term God can be used as identity, which we use it for the father, or it can refer to a person's nature. So what did Jesus do? He spoke in a way that they got it. I'm not the father, but I'm God in the flesh. And that's why if you read the gospels, they even condemn him saying, you a man, make yourself out to be God. Why? Because they knew, wait, you didn't claim to be the father, but you just said you're the son of God in such a way that makes you equal to the father. Therefore, you're claiming to be God, but we can't accept it because you're a man. So there would be no better way for Jesus to have said he's God than the way he said it so his audience wouldn't misunderstand him. And I can give you verse after verse after verse. And I'll give you some examples. But now, if the dot was standing in front of me, I'm going to say, so Jesus has to say, I am God in those words for you to accept it. Well, I will now take Shahada. And Omar can chime in. You show me in your Quran. Now notice, I'm going to use your argument. I will take Shahada. If you show me in the Quran where the Quran has Isa saying, I am the Messiah. Where he has Jesus saying he's the Messiah. Where Isa in your Quran, because the Quran quotes Isa. He speaks. I want you to show me in the Quran where Isa says, I am the Messiah. Okay, that's different to Jesus claiming to be no, God, no, though. If you, you can stick on that one first, first then I can just... Either answer it or don't tap dance, because I'm not interested in your tap dance. I want the... No, no, it doesn't say that. He doesn't, doesn't say, say that. that. He doesn't say that right, I am secondly. the Messiah. Okay, well, secondly, can you show me where Isa says, I am the word of Allah sent down to Mary? Because that's Surah An Nisa 4171, where Allah says, Isa ibn Maryam, kalimatuhu al qaha illa Maryam. The Messiah is his word, which he sent down to Mary. So I want you now to show me where Isa says, I am the word of Allah sent down to Mary. Come on. Oh, well, he's a prophet. And well, wait a second, because if you say that he's the word of Allah, it's like it's like me saying any prophet is the word of God because that's not my they... argument, Lewis. You're attacking straw man, and the Quran doesn't say anyone else is the word of God. But I'm not. That's not my argument. The Quran says Isa is the word of Allah sent to Mary. Now, can you show me where Jesus said that? Because the Quran says he's Messiah. But I want Jesus to say, I'm Messiah in your Quran. The Quran says he's the word of Allah sent to Mary. Show me where Jesus in the Quran says, I am the word of Allah sent to Mary. It, it doesn't say that verbatim. But my question to you is, why would it have to say that? Why, do, why would Jesus That's have to say that? That's my question to you. Why does Jesus have to say, I am God, if God the Father says he's God and the creator? And that should be sufficient for me. God now, the no, Father no. says that Jesus is God? Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Yes. That Open Jesus is God. The, the, Yes, the father says to the son, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And then he says to the son, you're the Lord who created heaven and earth. Hebrews, no, that's, that was that's question. Cool, Paul. Oh, wait, hold on. But your Quran is from Muhammad, so I don't care what Muhammad says that your God said, because that's Muhammad saying your God said it. See, two can play that game. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, Lewis, did you catch it? But of the son, he says, do we need to show you who's the one speaking? But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, you know is forever is? and ever. You know who the he is? No, I don't. Show him from Hebrews 1, 5. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I've begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Louis, did you catch that? Who's speaking? Who's telling the angels? To worship who before we they're, move on they're saying to worship the sun so who's saying that though well this would be god almighty speaking oh right? wait so just like you believe the quran is allah's speech allah tells you jesus messiah it's good enough for you well god the father tells me jesus's son all angels must worship him and calls him god and creator now continue of the angels he says he makes his angels wins and his ministers a flame of fire but of the sun he says your throne O god is forever and ever. This is God speaking, right? And what did he yep. call Jesus? He, he said, your throne, O God, is so forever and ever. So the Father called Jesus in Greek, it's O Theos, the God. 
What is it in Arabic? Uh, ya Allah. Ya Allah. Yeah. But in Arabic, they translate it, Ya Allah. But now finish it. Look what else the Father says about the Son. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, oh, laid the... Who's, who's speaking again? Who's now saying... You, Lord, who's speaking? Still the Father. And who is he speaking to, Louis? Um, he, he's, uh, I'm not sure who he's speaking to here. He's saying... Start at 8. To the sure. Son. Show me. Oh, That's what oh he's, he's speaking directly to the Son. Okay. Okay, That's wait. Right. So you just acknowledge, not that you believe it. Go back. The Father just said to the Son, You, Lord, you, Son, are the Lord. And then look what he says about him. You, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. And the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe. You will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed. But you are the same and your years will have no end. So God, the father just said to the son, you are the Lord the Rab, that created the heavens and the earth. You control them. You change them. And you're unlike them. You remain the same. And you're the God who rules forever. And you're my son and all angels must worship you. Good enough for me. It's very interesting what you're showing me because how do the Jews interpret this? I would love say, to oh, know. That's why you Christians are pagans. You're corrupt and you worship three gods. And that's yeah, simple. Cool. But thank God there are thousands and thousands of Jews who are Trinitarian, who worship the Trinity and believe the New Testament. One of the leading scholars who's a Jew who debates rabbis to prove the Trinity and Jesus is God in the flesh and Messiah, Dr. Michael L. Brown. Now, Jay, if you want to add anything, that's that's the uh, D dot argument. If you ever hear it. Show me where Jesus says, I am God in those exact words. So then I return the favor. So my and question that, is, Tell me the, the verse I, that you just read. It was Hebrews, Hebrews 1. With. The entire chapter of Hebrews 1. Okay, my question to you, Lewis, is just like you would say of me, it's not fair to insist that I have to show you, Christian, from my Quran where Isa says these words in the exact way. We accept the Quran, whatever it says about Isa, because that's Allah speaking. Then I return the favor. It's not fair for you to insist to me that Jesus has to speak a certain way in my Bible for it to be true, because I believe my Bible inspired by God, and God is telling me, the Father is telling me that Jesus is God, the Lord, the Creator, Sustainer, who doesn't change. So it should be good enough for me. So for, because of that verse, Sam, is that the verse that brought you to believe that Jesus is divine? The whole entire Bible brought me to believe Jesus. That's what. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, yeah, you, you'll notice like the way that the Psalms are treated in that section of hebrews 1 and the other places of the new testament cites the psalms even jesus himself like for example when he cites psalm 110 it sets a pattern for how we interpret the rest of the psalms so in other words the rest of the text the torah the prophets the psalms the writings they become also gospel texts for us this is something that i think people don't understand especially from from islam they don't understand that the trinity is in the torah the trinity is in isaiah the trinity is in ezekiel these are passages that show us multiplicity in god at that time so we're not inventing these things these are in the text the new testament just backs this up and further confirms it so let me add one more example. You hear what he said, right? The entirety of the Bible leads us to worship the Trinity and that Jesus is God in the flesh, not just one or two, entirety. But I'm going to add on one more example of Jesus in our Bible, identifying himself God without having to use exact words. I'm saying my Bible. You may not believe Jesus said it, but here's some of the arguments that even from a Muslim perspective, it's clear that Jesus claimed to be God. For example, in chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran, Surat al-Hadid, it says he's the inward, the outward. First and last, and he knows all things. No creature can say he's the first or the last because first means he was there from the beginning. He'll be there till the very end. And Allah or God can say that because God was there before creation, continues to be, and never ceases. So only God can say this. That's why no prophet says it, neither in the Old Testament or in the Quran. You'll never find a prophet saying I'm the first and last. So now I'm going to read something to you. You don't bring it up. Uh, don't bring it up, God. I'm just going to read it. Revelation 117 says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he said to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So the one speaking says, I am the first and last. According to the Quran, who's the first and the last? It would be God. But then it says in Revelation 117, 18, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he placed his right hand upon me and said, do not be afraid. I'm the first and last, the living one who died. And behold, I came to life. I live forevermore and I hold the keys of death and 80. So when did Allah die? He doesn't die. You just said the first and last is Allah. And that person said, I'm the first and the last. I died and I live forevermore. Well, we know Jesus died and came to life. So how dare Jesus claim to be the first and last?